Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Leap Classes. I am Anjali. Children, as per the pattern of semester one exams, we have also started our MCQ 10 on 10 series, and we have already completed 10 videos of that. And today I am here with part 11 of this series, and today we will be doing again section B. Right? First nine videos are there on section A, and 10th video and 11th today, which we are doing, are based on section B questions. Children, before we start section B questions for today's video, I want all of you that you should practice more and more programs. The more you will practice, your logic will be more clear and it will be very easy for you to attempt section B questions. Right? Here I am trying to follow the pattern which is given in the specimen question paper and I suppose if you will do these questions properly, that will help you quite a lot in your board exams, right? That is semester one exam. So let us begin our first question. The question is, design a class to overload a function sum series as follows. And here two functions are given, void sum series, int and double x, with one integer argument and one double argument to find and display the sum of the series given below. Here children, the series is given, s equals to x by 1 minus x by 2 plus x by 3 minus x by 4 like this. And the second function is void sum series. To find and display the sum of the series 1 plus 1 into 2 plus 1 into 2 into 3 and the last term is up to 20. Right children? So here if you see these two functions are there. And if you see the function name void sum series and here also it is sum series. The function names are same. What does that indicate? Yes, that means it is the program of function overloading. The question can come like this also in the exam that uh, which principle is followed in the given program that will be polymorphism or function overloading is it given in the program or not, you will say yes, it is function overloading. I suppose all of you know what is function overloading. When you have more than one function with the same name and they are differentiated by the means of parameters, either the type or the number of parameters. The values which you give here within the brackets are the parameters. So in the first one, int, n and double x, two values are there. One is integer type, one is double type. And in second one, there is no parameter, right? It is non-parameterized. Children, I would advise you to read the section B questions very carefully. That will give you an ease in attempting and giving the correct answers, right? So let us start the program. And here A, B, C, D, E, these five blanks are there. Each question is for each blank. Class overload void sum series. This is the function sum series A. And if we see the second function here, void sum series is here with no parameters. That means the first one is with parameters and definitely the parameters will be given in the question. So here two parameters are there, int n and double x. So what should be the correct option for blank A, int A double x, int n double x, int comma double or int comma int. int comma int cannot be there because it is one integer, one double. Then int comma double also is not possible because we have to give the variable names also. Then third is int n comma double x. If you match this, here what is given int n and double x, right? And it is matching with this option. So option 2 is the correct answer. Children, you may make mistake here that int a double x. So please don't overlook all these small things. So here if the variable name is not specified, then you can write any of 1 and 2. But if variable name is specified in the question, definitely you have to use the same variable name. So, option 2 is the correct answer, right? Then we move on to the next question. That is, choose the correct option for blank B. Now, we read this. 
children if you see if you know how to write the statements for doing this series definitely there will be no problem it is x by n x is the value which you have already taken as here as the parameter it is receiving one double type x value and it is going from 1 till n so we have taken the loop from 1 till n now if you will see the term first is positive second is negative third is positive minus plus like that it is right so on which basis it is doing plus or minus denominator is different numerator is same x in all so if the denominator is 2 it is 4 6 like that then it is doing minus that means the denominator is deciding whether the value will be added or it will be subtracted and denominator from where you are getting from the value of i this is a looping variable which is going from 1 to n so here what should be there if i mod 2 is equals to 0 definitely this only you have to give because if it is fully divisible by 2 and you are getting remainder as 0 that means the number is even so here this condition will be there if this is modulus 2 is equals to 0 then we are doing subtraction if it is not this that means it is not even it is odd then you are doing addition so here out of these options which will be correct if i modulus 2 equals to 0 then we will proceed further right so option 3 is the correct answer now we move to the correct option for blank c this is the second series int sum equals to 0 product equals to c children if you notice here product equals to product into i here 1 plus 1 into 2 plus 1 into 2 into 3 if you will see in each term the next value is multiplied with the previous one. 1 into 2 is previous one only. 1 is from the previous term and then 2 is multiplied. 1 into 2 is from the previous term then this is multiplied. right? So that is what it is done here. Product equals to product into i. So this product variable is actually storing the multiplication for each term. So this has to be initialized by what? 0. 1 0.0 or 1.0 children if you notice here it is given int product that means we cannot take 1.0 or 0.0 .0. now only two options are left 0 and 1 now in almost all the videos whenever we have done any product related problem i have told you that product always has to be initialized by 1 why because 1 is multiplicative identity and whenever we multiply any number by 1, the value of the number will not change. Whereas if we will initialize by 0, every time you will get the result as 0. So 1 is the correct answer. That means option 2 is the correct answer. Right children, I suppose you are understanding the logic. Children, please, it needs too much practice. The more you will practice, better marks you will get. Now we come to the fourth question that is choose the correct option for blank t now here we have already filled product equals to 1 now till which value you have to take this loop int i equals to 1 yes first is 1 and the last is 20 so what operator should be used here i is greater than 20 i is less than 20 i is equals to 20 or i is less than equals to 20 Yes, children, what do you say? Yes, you are right. So, option 4 that is less than equals 2 is the correct answer. Because we have to move 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. So, till it is less than or equal to 20, we have to repeat the statement given within the loop. Right? After this is over, the statement, print statement is there and the value of sum will be printed. Now we move on to the next part. Choose the correct option for blank B. Overload blank is B equals to new overload. Children always remember that new is the operator which is used to create the object of the given class. 
if you will notice here overload is the class name right now what should be the object name is it the reserved word or user defined word yes it is user defined word so the options here are capital o and b ob small sc and object what do you think is the correct answer i told you that this is user defined name and you have to see other statements also which are based on this if you will check here the next two statements how these functions are called ob dot that means the object name which is specified here and here should be used here for creation right so here option 2 is the correct answer now we move on to question number 2 The following program checks whether the entered number is duck number or not. Children, duck numbers are the numbers which have zero in them, at least one zero, and that should not be the leading zero. Suppose, let me give you the example: five zero four is a duck number, right? But zero five four is not a duck number because it is. starting with zero so any number which is starting with zero is not a duck number but if it contains zero in between or at the end of the number then that number is a duck number so children we have to give the answers of the questions which are given here four blanks are there and first question is a different question which is not from the blank right let us start from question number first only check whether the prototype for function main is valid or invalid here it is written public static void main string args is it valid or invalid yes right it is valid now children here if in place of string args if it is written string args and square brackets like this this is also valid and after main only blanks are there then also it is valid because we are using scanner class so any of these prototypes can be given and you have to tell whether it is valid or not so all these three entries which i have written are the valid entries these square brackets can be after args or after string but only at one place right this string args is not required if you are using scanner class for inputting the values okay now let us move to the second part of this question choose the correct option for blank b now duck number children what is the logic for duck number we have to extract digit by digit from the right side towards the left side and every time we are extracting a digit we have to check whether it is zero or not and till when we have to repeat the process till your number till when you are doing the division till that quotient value is more than zero right so if the first one is zero then also there is no problem because if it is greater than zero then only we are repeating the process so if first one is zero it will not go into the loop right here enter number n equals to sc dot next int the number is entered num equals to what num is another variable if you see num is also declared int type here and what value should be assigned to num children if you see here num is a variable which using which the looping is also done right so here we don't want to disturb the number entered by the user we want to keep that number safe so that we don't want to change that number every time so we are using a variable num and in this variable the value n will be initialized so that if you have entered 505 num will become 505 so that your value n remains safe it will remain unchanged right so num equals to here already i have discussed the answer option 2 is the correct answer children again here as soon as you see the question on your screen please just in your mind decide what is the correct answer and just wait for my answer the moment i tell you the answer please check your answer right and i know all of you are going to attempt all the questions correctly now we move on to the second 
that is c part of this while num greater than 0 yes i told you the logic till it is greater than 0 we have to repeat the process again and again and what should be the first step to extract the digit extract the digit one by one and extraction of digit we know that modulus 10 if suppose it is 58 i want to extract 8 from this what i will do 58 modulus 10 this will give you 8 right so to extract the rightmost digit from a number we always take the remainder using modulus symbol modulus 10 right so here r equals to what num modulus 10 and then we are checking if r equals to 0 or not so out of this which option is the correct option yes option 1 is the correct option children please don't put a tick mark don't choose any of the correct option without knowing the reason everything what you do in program has a reason and i want all of you to practice more and more right now we move on to the next part flag equals to that is option d we have to fill flag equals to when this the value of flag is changing if r equals to 0 if r equals to 0 that means you are getting a 0 in the number right so if you see here flag equals to false is initialized earlier in the beginning only in the program it is written flag equals to false. Now if it is 0 that means the number is a duck number right because it contains 0 in it. So what we have to do we have to turn flag to true. So option 3 is the correct answer. Now we move on to the next part to fill the blank E. Num equals to what? Children, if you see here, first digit is extracted. It is checking whether it contains 0 or not. And if it contains 0, it will turn the flag to true. If it does not contain 0, what it will do? It has to move to the next value. Now, let me give you one example. Suppose the number is 508, right? First time the value of r is 508 modulus 10 what you have got 8 r equals to 0 no r is not 0 so it will not be executed it will come here for next time what should be the value of num we have already taken 8 into account so we want 50 how this 50 will come 508 slash 10 children whenever you divide any number by 10 you get the quotient part leaving the last digit. So your answer will be 50 here, right? So num, what should be the value of num? Num should be num slash 10. The value of num was this and when you will do slash 10, you will get all the remaining digit except the rightmost digit, right? So you have the correct option as option for num slash 10. So children, I hope you are enjoying this series and children, again I request all of you to practice the programs, the number programs especially. Children, here I want to mention that nested looping is not there in your syllabus. So practice the programs with single loop for while, right? My best wishes are with each one of you as we have got little more time, little extra time for the preparation. And definitely will try to do that. Those who haven't subscribed the channel till now, please do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get the notifications for all the videos and no important topic is missed by you. You may join us on our Telegram channel also. The link is there in the description box. Keep practicing, keep working hard, keep solving the MCQs. God bless you children. Thank you.